Greetings! In today's video, we're gonna mix our own primary triad using pigments and a watercolor binder. The advantages to this are many, and it's a good way to put you in a situation to learn how to mix many colors from only three. If you've watched my series of watercolor videos for beginners, you've seen a bit of what I mean here. Mixing your own paints bring you close to the process, which is also a great way to learn more about the tools we use. By using pigments and mixing the paints, you can also make your own convenience mixes and adjust them according to what you precisely want. It requires a small investment in tools, but those should last you a long time. I'm taking this opportunity to use Sennelier's primary pigments and watercolor binder. It's meant to be very simple to use, as the binder is already in a liquid state. A pre-measured formula that all you have to add in is pigment. The pigments, if I understand well, are balanced with each other. Equal parts of yellow and red should give me an orange, yellow and blue a green, and blue and red a purple. Sennelier offers the recipe as well, though I had to refer to both the brochure and their YouTube channel to get the full method. The brochure is super interesting to read and contains a lot of really good information, regardless of if you want to mix paint or not. Of course, you may know that I'm already familiar with the process of mixing my own paints, but I use pigments from a different source and I mix my own binder. For this video, I'll be using Sennelier's suggested method and supplement with my own knowledge, if need be. The recipe I found for using these materials recommends using one part pigment for two parts binder. The pigment is mixed in with a painting knife, then mold with a glass molar. Regarding the supplies themselves, the binder is liquid and easy to use, though I think I should have mixed mine more. I did shake the container before using it, but I think using a tool to really mix the sediments at the bottom would have been a good idea. It has a faint smell that reminded me of plain yogurt. The pigments are very fine and they are really easy to mold. They are also incredibly easy to wash off the glass slab. This is something that might not come to mind at first, but some colors are a lot of work to wash off, like Prussian blue. These three primary colors, however, were so easy to wash away. I was really surprised, as these pigments are usually quite stainy in paints. As for the colors themselves, my impression varies. I added in my process the step of checking a dry paint swatch to see if any pigment rubs off. For the yellow, I never really brought it to a point where zero color would rub off. The red was the easiest to work of the three colors and behaved like a dream. The blue was also very weird. Of the three primary pigments, it's the one I like the least. It's supposed to be a phthalo blue, a known intense staining deep color. This blue paint I'm mixing is so weak. The container says that mineral extenders were used for this color, and while I understand the idea of it, they really went too far with this blue. I'm guessing the extenders in the three primary colors is to balance them out, like I said earlier, so that they would mix in equal parts to make secondary colors. In reality, the ratio of extenders in this blue goes too far and we lose the color's intensity. Also, of the three colors, the blue is the only pigment that has texture issues when mixed in with the binder. The paint is not smooth and won't make for nice washes. Once I was done mixing the primary colors, I tried mixing the secondary colors. I wanted to see if the balance aspect of these pigments was really worth it. In my opinion, it's not. 
I think it's not the best habit to develop, as all other commercial paints don't follow this logic of balance. Sure, equal parts of these colors give secondary colors, but those aren't really hard to mix from regular, unbalanced pigments either. After mixing the secondary colors, I set the pans to dry out. I want to take a moment to show the various phthalo blue pigments Sennelier offers. We can see from the brochure that they offer four colors made from phthalo blue, with a wide range of intensity. The darker, pure phthalo blue is probably a better choice, but it's also possibly more work to mix properly. It's also much more expensive, being a pure pigment. Still, I'd recommend saving up a bit longer and getting this one, since I'd expect it to offer a better payoff in the end, regardless of the possible issues in mixing such a strong color. The yellow and red pigments are offered only in the primary red and yellow colors. After a good two weeks, I came back to the paints. Here we have the pigments themselves, as reference. I checked the leftover paint in the jars. The yellow and red look perfectly fine. The blue paint has separated and would require to be stirred before using it. The dry paint in the pans is overall the same in look and texture in all the pans. It dried a bit spongy, and is soft to the touch. The paint is a bit sticky, but not to the point that color would transfer to my fingers with a light press. I will do paint swatches to compare these. I have my mixed colors, the primary triad in Sennelier's sampler set, and the commercially made half pans from the same pigments, by Sennelier again. I will start by swatching the latter, then the sampler paints, and finally my hand-mixed ones. Of course, not all of these are the same pigments, but we can still see the kind of variations into play. The sample colors, even if they are different pigments, still show a more vibrant blue than my hand-mixed one. The yellow is fairly consistent in all three triads. The red from the hand-mixed paints and from the regular Sennelier range is also very similar, with mine being perhaps a touch weaker. The hand-mixed blue is just sad and flat compared to the others. Also of note, we can see the odd texture it has, and how that texture affected the secondary colors made with blue. The final turn the colors took ended up making me reconsider making this video about mixing a primary triad, and making this a long-term way to have staple colors. I don't think this blue cuts it. The red and yellow are good, and with a stronger blue, this would be a pretty awesome basic triad. For me, these three colors are a must-have in every palette. I also quite love the idea of the ready-made binder. My final recommendation would be to make sure you check the pigment composition in the Sennelier pigment jars to avoid picking those with mineral extenders, should you want to give this a try. What do you think of these paints? Any idea about how I could fix it? Thanks for watching, have a great day, bye bye.